Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing okay. I'm going to make this video about a little secret that scientists have been keeping from people and not really explaining to people very well. Now I'm not just making this up because it's it's evident that people don't really know what the issues are with uh, with general relativity and the uh, time dilation. Everyone knows, of course, Einstein emphasized it that the speed of light can't go over more than can't be more than 186,000 miles a second. Einstein emphasized that, and so uh, everybody, everybody has that drilled into their minds that you know light can't go any faster than the speed of light. It's not possible because uh, the things, the relative things that change are not the speed of light. The things that change are time and speed. Either the time changes or the speed changes or both. Anyway, that's for the observer. But it's, uh, it's a little bit deceptive, quite a bit deceptive, when when these astrophysicists like Lawrence Krauss and uh, Tyson and everybody get on there saying that uh, the the universe is uh, 13.8 billion years now because of how long it takes for the speed of light to reach us but that's that's not really that's like a, a dirty dirty little lie because uh, that's not the time that it takes for for light to reach us. That's the time that we observe light travel. Because we are in an expanded fabrication such that we see things, we see everything in slow motion. Because space expanded from no space an infinitesimal point, which is no space. And also what they're not telling you is that time expanded from no time. Well, so this nonsense of uh, it taking 13.8 billion years for light to reach us from the farthest, farthest uh, galaxies or whatever is just nonsense. Because of the fact that you're looking at expanded time, you're not. You're looking at time that expanded from no time. You're not looking at real time. You're not took, looking at the actual time that it takes for a photon to reach us. Ask them what the actual time it takes for the photon to reach us. Ask them what the actual speed of light <coughs> is. Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you. He'll say that light is. Uh, he'll say that light lives uh, in uh, in no time or outside of time, or that it it arrives instantly. I won't go as far as to say that light arrives instantly, but it arrives almost instantly. Because it has to leave the place where it came from, and it has to arrive to where where it's detected by our eyes or detected by our instruments. That time that it takes is almost no time from the farthest quasars, which is another problem, because quasars aren't supposed to exist in an early universe. So they... they Still trying to explain away why quasars are being seen from so far away. Well, it's because we're seeing things in real time. People are not 
putting this together. Because you can't measure expanded time. You can't do it. Because it's time that expanded from no time. If you're going to measure it, the universe, it's no time. But we, we know from actual history, we have an actual history of expanded time being at least a little over 6,000 years because we have human records, historical records going back that far. But beyond that, there's no way to know. There's no way to know if the, if the universe was even here. Because the universe is expanded time, a time that expanded from no time. Everything we see is in real time, actual historical time. So the millions and uh, billions of years that they're saying exist, it can't be proven. No, they're not even there. They don't exist. Not from, not from the evidence. You can't tell from the evidence. You can tell me from the evidence how old the universe is because the light is reaching us in almost no time. So if the light is reaching us from the farthest quasar in almost no time, how can you say it takes billions and billions of years to reach us? Sure, that's our observation. Our observation is that of expanded time. But that's not the actual time that it takes for light to reach us. Which should be, should be uh, raising some red flags. Because the photon is like there almost instantly, or some say would even say instantly. It's already there. When it leaves, it's already here. It's, it's almost as if the universe, when the photon reaches us, the universe, for as far as the photon is concerned, just unfolded or just collapsed on itself. Because space, space became no space while it was while it was right while it was traveled from the farthest, farthest farthest galaxy to us, it became almost no space and no time. So as far as the photon is concerned, the whole thing, the whole universe collapsed already. But we're still in expanded time. We're in a fabrication of expanded time and expanded space. And it hasn't, as far as we're concerned, it hasn't collapsed yet. Because we're still in a fabrication of expanded time and expanded space. Of course, there's no guarantee that that's going to stay around for very much longer. There's no guarantee that it's been around forever and there's no guarantee that it's going to continue forever because we live in a fabrication and the fabrication has function only when it's directed and you can be sure that no physical thing ever directs anything in the universe physical things only ever do what they are forced to do and physical things what they're, what they're forced to do or directed to do and to begin with physical things can only ever be what they're forced to be they can only do what they're forced to do and directed to do physical things never determine any things significant in as far as sequences sequencing. They can't sequence any given directive, directives or directions to make any kind of working mechanism of any kind. So all this bashing that's going on by the scientists that are bashing the Christians, the Christians are the ones that are telling the truth. And it's the secular scientists that are not looking at the facts correctly that are wrong. It's the secular scientists that are wrong. 
the ones that are bashing the Christians, saying that that they're they don't know what they're talking about when they're saying six thousand years. Yeah, but it's the Christians that are going by the observable evidence, the historical evidence. The only evidence that we have is historical evidence and observable evidence in real time. Even to this day, everything we observe in space is in real time. It's what's happening right now. The scientists aren't telling you. This. That's, a, that's their dirty little secret. They're saying it takes billions of years for you to see billions of years ago back into time. You're seeing back into you're not seeing back into time. Because what you're seeing is in real time. So how can you be seeing back into time? How can you be seeing quasars in the beginning of the universe? It's just nonsense. How do you expect to to see galaxies in a deep field? without them being fuzzy, the ultra deep field. How can you can expect to see them without them being fuzzy, as far away as they are, expanded away from us. It's not that they're in an early stage of the development, it's just that they're so far away that, that, that the photons can't possibly give us an accurate picture of what they are. It's not because they're so far back in the time. Because otherwise you wouldn't be seeing quasars. You're seeing things in real time. What you see is, is what's happening right now. The only evidence that we have is in real historical time. That's the only evidence we have. We don't have evidence of millions and billions of years. It doesn't happen. The geological record is that of 5,000 years maximum. Because every ancient civilization is built on the sediments deposited by the global historical flood that happened about 5,000 years ago. And every ancient cal calendar, every ancient historical record only goes back to about 5,000 years. There is no other record any older than that except for the biblical record which goes back more than that. It was back another 1,600 years. Only the biblical record has history from before every ancient civilization. Now, Abraham was a Sumerian. He was a Sumerian from the city of Ur. They just dug up a city, they just dug up the city and found a, a figurine, a stone carved figurine of some kind of a priest in a robe or something. They called them idols, idols back then. That's what they call them, they call them idols because they're images. Good or bad or whether they believed in them or not, they were called idols. It's like a doll, figurine what they call him, idol. Abraham's father was an idol maker. It's likely that Abraham's father made that figurine, or he knew the guy that made it. It's a possibility. When Abraham was born, Noah was still living. Noah was still alive when Abraham was born. Abraham is the father of the Edomites from Esau, the father of the Israelites from Jacob, who was named Israel. He's the father of seven other sons, Arab sons. Abraham is the father of seven other Arab sons besides, besides uh, Isaac. It was Isaac. Isaac and then Jacob. Isaac had Esau and Jacob. But Abraham had seven other sons besides Isaac. Arab sons. And he told them, each one of them, to go. He gave them supplies and stuff to go in different directions. So that 
the descendants of Isaac would inherit the land, which would be later the descendants of Jacob. The Edomites went and lived off somewhere else. Now these are real people that we are all related to. Abraham, of course, was a Semite from Shem, from the Shem, uh, who was one of Noah's sons. The rest of us are either Japhethites or Hamites. The Hamites are the Africans. They went to Africa. The Japhethites had a mother that had mtDNA, mitochondrial DNA from Neanderthals. And you can test us to this day. You can test the Japhethites to this day. They have mtDNA from Neanderthals and Africans don't. That's because we have a different mother. There was three different mothers. There was three different families that survived the global flood that started all the ancient civilizations. The Sumerian, which is where Abraham came from, and all the other, all the other civilizations were started by the three sons of Noah. And the mitochondrial DNA from the Neanderthals proves that we're not all related to Africans. That's another lie. It's another dirty little lie that scientists are trying to push on you, make you believe. So, you scientists are attacking people that believe in actual history, actual historical history, verifiable historical history. Because everything that was living on earth is in the sediments, consecutive layers of water deposited sediments a mile or more deep, as much as two miles deep. Everything that was living on earth was buried by the flood. It's all there. You can't have over a hundred million cubic miles of consecutive layers of water deposited sediments without having a global flood distributed around on every continent without a, having a global flood. You can't have it. So you scientists are the ones that are lying. You scientists are, or secular scientists are the ones that are not telling the truth. It's the Christians that have been telling the truth all along. And you're slamming us for talking about real history, real verifiable, knowable history. That's the only, you can only go by what the information that you have. You can't make up your data. You can't make up information. And since everything you see in space is in real time, you're not seeing back into time. So you can't say there's billions of years. You don't know there's billions of years. You can't say that. You can't prove that with science because the photons are reaching your eye from the farthest quasar in almost no time. So you're seeing it in real time. You're seeing what's happening out in the farthest reaches of outer space in real time. It's a lie for you to say that it takes billions of years to reach your eyes. Because you're seeing what you are seeing is expanded time and expanded space, which completely collapses when the photon reaches you. It's completely gone as far as the photon is concerned. So you better wise up and snap out of your trance. There is no way you can attribute our existence to any physical object. No particle, no part of a particle, no atom, no molecule, no groups of molecules that haven't already been directed. You can't attribute anything 
to natural to a natural cause. The functionality alone screams that you have a maker. But you don't wouldn't know it. You only know it because the elements are programmable and programmed inside of you. To make all the working mechanisms and the pumps and the motors and the electronic controls, electronic communication and stuff inside of you. No object is able to make any working mechanism of any kind. It can't make a can opener. It can't make a, an arrowhead. It can't make anything without, because it doesn't have any intent. It doesn't have any directives except in life forms. The fact that life forms have directives is the evidence of a director. So you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're seeing the evidence of your maker. Because no physical thing is able to make you. Evolution doesn't exist. It's been tried and it's been proven false time and time after time. Evolution, no part of evolution ever exists. The variation of the same kind is not any kind of transformation of any kind. You can't say that variation of the same kind will transform something because it never does. It never has, never will, never does. So you're wrong on every level. You were wrong on every level. Your fantasy is nothing more than that, nothing more than your imagination. It's wrong. It's a fantasy. It's not reality. It's not the truth. It's not based on any fact. It's only imagination, conjecture, assertion. You have no evidence. You have no facts. The Christians have all the facts. They have the truth. They're telling the truth. That we live in a world, a corrupt world, that was corrupted by us, and it's waiting for redemption. And only... Our maker is able to remake everything over again, everything new again. And he's here to make it new starting from the inside out. He just wants to, wants to see if you're going to tell the truth or not. He wants you to start telling the truth. And if you can't tell the truth, you're not, you don't deserve eternal life for being remade again. You deserve the same punishment as every liar because liars can't exist in heaven. Lies don't exist in heaven. Lies only exist in this little measly fabrication of expanded time and expanded space that we exist in that's coming, is about to collapse. That's the only place that lies exist. In your imagination. You made it up. It's not true. It's the only place that. Your lies exist. It's about time you wise up. And snap out of your trance. And start telling the truth. So that you don't keep sending people. To their. Destruction. People have a bad enough time trying to do what's right as it is. They don't need you lying to them. They don't need you encouraging them to go to hell. Everybody talks about, they like to compare atheists with Christians. Oh, atheists are so much more intelligent. I don't believe that. Atheists are some of the worst low lives that there are. Now you can't convince me that they know more than I do. You can't t convince me that they're more intelligent than I am. Now every one of us 
has our issue. Every one of us came from a bad place, myself included. But we need to stop this nonsense. We need to stop this nonsense and start telling the truth. It's the only way. And you scientists need to start teaching the facts as, as what they are. You need to stop teach, stop talking about millions of years they don't exist. There is no evidence of millions or billions of years. You don't even know what that is. You have no concept of what bil billions of years are. You have no concept of that. And if you do, you're, you're just a flat out liar because there is no way that the earth is even any more than 14 million years old if you look at the sediments that are on land and not in the ocean where they should be if the earth was 14 million years old. The earth is not even 14 million. You're just a bunch of liars. You're a bunch of liars. No evidence supports your belief, your teaching, your lie. You have no evidence. You have no evidence to say the earth or the universe is billions of years old because everything you see out there is in real time. Now, this dirty little lie that you've been teaching has been going on for, for long enough. People have known about relativity since Einstein. And it's about time somebody starts telling the truth about it. The earth is not billions of years old. The evidence doesn't show billions of years old. Billions of years. The evidence shows that you can only know things in real time. You can't, because everything you see is in real time. Everything in outer space is in real time. You can't see billions of years. They're not there. They, they don't exist. There's no evidence of it. This is something that is, has, has been annoying me ever since, ever since, for years. Years and years and years. You have these people in the magazines and on TV talking about millions and billions of years. It doesn't exist. No way and no how. They were, all the fossils were buried 5,000 years ago. That's it. That's it. You don't have no more time than that. That's our history. That's the evidence that we have. 5,000 years since the global flood that buried all the fossils, the dinosaurs, everything that existed. It's all there. It's all there in the record for you to see. It's consecutive layers stacked on top of each other a mile or more deep on every continent. How much more evidence of a global flood do you need for crying out loud? What is wrong with you people? I get this I get this nonsense day in and day out evolution 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 doesn't exist the evolution of cars cars are designed they don't it's not evolution the evolution of music music is by intent that's not evolution evolution doesn't exist apart from the, from the imagination of your own fabrication. It doesn't exist anywhere at any time. It's in the government. It's in the schools. It doesn't even exist. There's no evidence of it. It's time to get rid of this evolution now. It's killing people. It's destroying people. You have all the people in in uh, in Europe and everything thinking they know something. They oh evolution, uh, hey, creation is uh, a bunch of deluded, brainwashed people that don't know what the facts are. 
the facts are of a global flood. That's what the only facts we have. The only facts that we have are civilizations no more than 5,000 years. That's the evidence that we have. I'm tired of this nonsense. You need to stop this evolution right now. It doesn't exist. No part of it exists. Just use your mind. Just use your mind. You have uh, you have mutations, right? What do mutations program? What can a mutation program? Is it going to program anything with other mutations? You have natural selection. What's it going to select? It's going to select what's already programmed. It's just a bunch of nonsense. You can't use what's already directed as evidence of no direction. Working mechanisms can do two things. They can work or they can fail. And you're dependent, you're dependent on a random chance which destroys 99% more than it ever supposedly ever makes. It's never going to morph anything. It's never going to transform anything. It's never going to give you a mind where there is no mind. So it's just nonsense. You people are making me think that I'm smart. And I know I'm not that smart. But at least I have, I want to know what your excuse is for giving credit to all the, to objects for making you what you are. What's your excuse? What's your excuse for giving credit to objects for your existence? What's your excuse? There is no magic. There is no evolution. It doesn't exist. All the evidence of a, is of a maker. And if you think that objects made you, you have to prove that before you can say it. Now you need to stop teaching evolution because it doesn't exist. It only exists as a figment of your imagination. Nothing more. And that's it. So wise up and... and do yourself a favor and do society a favor and stop teaching this nonsense of evolution. It doesn't exist. We have a maker that we have to answer to. That's what the facts are. You don't like the facts, then you live in fantasy. You're living in fantasy because you don't like what the facts are. That's what the facts are. Don't shoot the messenger. That's what the facts are. Have a nice day. Sleep well.